I did. Please adjust the slider until the computer is barely visible. Please enter the current time. Okay, let's see. It's 9.06. That should about do it. All right. Welcome everybody. This is my personal let's play of the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. I'm a huge fan of the Stanley Parable, like of the original uh, not so original 2013 release. Um, okay, a little history with this before we proceed playing the game. Uh, there has been this Half-Life 2 mod originally. I actually never really went around to play it. Um, I've seen Let's Plays. I know, I know. Let's Plays. Um, not actually playing such a game as the Stanley Parable, but I only came around... Um, the notion that this original mod existed right la way later after I installed and played through the majority of the back then it was called the Stanley Parable HD Remaster or HD Re-Release so the predecessor to this game um, we are actually playing right now so and we are now playing the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe is it a remaster? Is it a remake? Is it a predecessor? Is it a sequel? Is it a prequel? Many, many questions and all of these will be answered hopefully soon. Let's just make sure that the configuration is up to snuff. Uh, we're playing at 1440p, 170Hz. Nice. Uh, we'll, of course, be compressed to beautiful uh, 60 FPS for your viewing pleasure here. Uh, four times anti aliasing uh, that's got to be higher. Okay, can't go quality profile any more than high. <clears throat> Audio sounds about right. Uh, in general, anything we can add to. No, next Okay, that's all. Um, accessibility options. Da -de -da -de -da. Looks fine by me. And we're gonna head into the main game. So let's begin and get back, at least for me, to our good old pal Stanley and the narrator. Here we go. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. 
and Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. <clears throat> All right. So let's just see what the narrative has in All of his co workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co workers. <laughs> Should shut them down all. This is what a good co worker does. Knocked oh, ourselves. No. I guess this is where Stanley felt he needed to be right now, in this little hallway, <laughs> here, with no distractions, to study room 417. Not to actually enter it. No, 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 no. That would be far too forward. Stanley wanted to know it from the outside, to see it not just with his eyes, but with his heart. He would know room 417 as no man or woman had ever known an office before. That ladder over there. Oh, and that little picture of a horizon or something. It's all just a never-ending parade of joy for Stanley. Beautiful. Ah, no, apparently not. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. And I suppose we all see the dilemma right here. Uh, in this case, we are going to follow the narration. Just to make it a little bit more uh, ambiguous as to what happens. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. So we got our meeting schedule here from Monday to Friday. <laughs> Everyone is unique, you most of all. This is genius. There we go. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth 
that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Amazing. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Here we go. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Hmm. 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 Let's follow the narration for now. Not much to do here. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold, Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Let's dismantle these controls once and for all. Dismantle them. Activating and taking control. Dismantling. Activating and taking control. Let's do the reasonable thing, what anyone would do. Whoops, finger slipped. Oh, Stanley. You didn't just activate the controls, did you? After they kept you enslaved all these years, you go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself. Is that what you wanted? Control? Oh, Stanley. I applaud your effort, I really do. But you need to understand, there's only so much that machine can do. You were supposed to let it go, turn the controls off, and leave. If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do much better than that. 
I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you do. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, <laughs> Stanley suddenly realized he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, nuclear detonators are set to explode, <laughs> eliminating oh, the entire complex. How long until detonation then? Mm, let's say, um, two minutes. Ah, now this is making things a little more fun, isn't it, Stanley? It's your time to shine. You are the star. It's your story now. Shape it to your heart's desires. Oh, this is much better than what I had in mind. What a shame we have so little time left to enjoy it. Mere moments until the bomb goes off. But what precious moments each one of them is. More time to talk about you, about me, where we're going, what all this means. I barely know where to start. What's that? You'd like to know where your co-workers are? A moment of solace before you're obliterated? All right, I'm in a good mood. You're going to die anyway. I'll tell you exactly what happened to them. I erased them. I turned off the machine. I set you free. Of course, that was merely in this instance of the story. Sometimes when I tell it, I simply let you sit there in your office forever, pushing buttons endlessly and then dying alone. Other times, I let the office sink into the ground, swallowing everyone inside, or I let it burn to a crisp. I have to say this, though. This no. version of events has been rather amusing. Watching you try to make sense of everything and take back the control wrested away from you, it's quite rich. I almost hate to see it go. But I'm sure whatever I come up with on the next go-around will be even better. My goodness, only 34 seconds left. But I'm enjoying this so much. You know what? To hell with it. I'm going to put some extra time on the clock. Why not? These are precious additional seconds, Stanley. Time doesn't grow on trees. Oh dear me, what's the matter, Stanley? Is it that you have no idea where you're going or what you're supposed to be doing right now? Or did you just assume when you saw that timer that something in this room was capable of turning it off? I mean, look at you. Running from button to button, screen to screen, clicking on every little thing in this room. These numbered buttons, no, these colored ones, or maybe this big red button, or this door. Everything, anything, something here will save me. Why would you think that, Stanley? That this video game can be beaten? One sold? Do you have any idea what your purpose in this place is? <laughs> Stanley. You're in for quite a disappointment. But here's a spoiler for you. That timer isn't a catalyst to keep the action moving along. It's just seconds ticking away to your death. You're only still playing instead of watching a cutscene because I want to watch you for every moment that you're powerless. To see you made humble. This is not a challenge, it's a tragedy. You wanted to control this world, that's fine. But I'm going to destroy it first, so you can't. Take a look at the clock, Stanley. That's 30 seconds Whoa. you have left to struggle. 30 seconds until a big boom and then nothing. No ending here, just you being blown to pieces. Will you cling desperately to your frail life, or will you let it go peacefully? Another choice. Make it count, or don't. It's all the same to me, all a part of the joke. And believe me, I will be laughing at every second of your inevitable life from the moment we fade in until the moment I say, happily ever up. Whoa. <laughs> Just... Whoa. Okay, as if nothing ever happened. That's the parable. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Or we could no matter how hard dream. Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Awaiting input. Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Here we go.
Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered aloud to nobody. He began wildly tearing through papers on the boss's desk, pulling books off the shelf, looking hey. behind paintings, desperate for clues to his situation. But his attention was caught by a keypad behind the boss's desk. What could its purpose be? In fact, this keypad guarded the terrible secret that lay buried below his feet. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. Okay, here we go. 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Sound this time. The plan is to follow through the narration. Oh, would you look at that? Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? <clears throat> I guess at this point we already kind of did. Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No. no. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Now pushing the on button wasn't a good idea, so... blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty was it over yes he had won he had defeated the machine unshackled himself from someone else's command freedom was mere moments away and yet even as the immense door slowly opened Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him, for it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, 
what to do or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was perhaps the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Well, <clears throat> what should I say? The irony is not lost on me here. I mean, this is basically a game about some dude pushing buttons and following orders. And in order to break free from this cycle, he has to follow orders and push buttons. Exactly how he gets told. So that can't be, say, the true ending to this. Um, Except it's a parable, so everything basically resets, restarts. Okay, maybe maybe I'm reading too much into this. So let's perceive. All uh, of his co workers were gone. What could it mean? Hmm? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. I think that door hasn't been there before. Well, we're gonna ignore it for now. When Stanley came to a set of two open <coughs> doors, he entered the door on his left. There were still a few opportunities on the left side uns unresolved. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. <laughs> Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. I'm done following orders at this point. I'm staying here. Feel safe. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow. Just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. What do you mean, empty? There's tons of beautiful things around here. Like this broom. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He I'm wasn't standing, even actually. doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. Who doesn't like doing sweet F.A.? Look at this broomstick. Ooh. Are you, are you really still in the broom closet? Think standing around doing nothing? Why? Please offer me some explanation here. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. Look at all these tools. They are you do realize beautiful. there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me because literally this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I never would have thought to mention it. Ah, just looking Maybe at those beautiful, beautiful lights. This is somehow its own branching path. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend, you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favorite. <laughs> I hope your friends find this concern. <laughs> I actually think there'll be 
Stanley was fat and ugly okay and really, really stupid. Right. He probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That all with drug money. Also, <laughs> Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. Drugs and hookers. All right. Well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. Hmm? You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. Well, in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. Mm. Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby? The person at this computer is dead. They have fallen <laughs> prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming, so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. All right, when you've done that, just step out into the hallway. Okay, I think we had our fun. Ah, second player. It's good to have you on board. <laughs> I guarantee you can't do any worse than the person who came before you. Maybe not any worse, but I think I can still do just as bad as he did. You too? Unbelievable. I'm at the mercy of an entire species of invalids. Perhaps there's a monkey nearby you can hand the controls to. <laughs> a fish? Fungus? Look, you can hammer out the details. I'm not particularly picky. I'll just be waiting for when you're ready to pick up the story again. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. We need to escape this place, I think. The moment he entered his manager's office, Stanley froze in his tracks. Not a living soul anywhere. Could he really be all alone? This was too much for Stanley to take. Too much for any man to take. He fell to his knees, bursting into half moans, <laughs> half sobs, the guttural retching of life from a man denied any hope, any reason to keep going. Here on the floor, he lay prone, paralyzed by fear for nearly a full hour. But when at last he began to move about and survey the situation, he found a keypad behind the boss's desk. I what wonder could it what mean? the key could be. Was it a sign of hope for Stanley's future? Alas, it was not. For although this keypad guarded the terrible secret of Stanley's past, oh. it had been assigned a four-digit code so devious and so random that no man could ever hope to guess it. 2845. Statistically, nearly impossible to guess blindly, ever. You mean... Oh! Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. Trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was 2845. Hmm, can we push this? Two, eight, four, five. <laughs> No. Forgot, but it turns out that the panel's emergency override kicked in, and the door just opened all by itself, and Stanley got the hell along with the story. Well, whoop de do. Whoop de do. Ain't there anything else here? Oh, hold up once. No. Hmm.
Mm. Hmm. I wonder. Whoops. Nope. Uh, never mind. Stanley actually got back into the elevator and went back up. Silly me. Silly you. Why did Stanley do that when he knew that it would just lead back to his boss's office? Well, that's a great question. I just can't wait to find out. Then find out together. Here we are, Stanley. It's your boss's office. Wow. Exactly the way it was before you got onto the elevator. It's still just exactly what it is. What a decision you've made to come up here and look at the office again. This has fleshed out the plot of the story in new and fascinating ways I could have never anticipated. It's that keen eye for storytelling that you have. An incisive rapid fire of critical plot points, one after the other, weaving a rich tapestry of uncompromising narrative. Wow. <laughs> I'm bolted to the edge of my seat. No. Can we do anything up here? Doesn't look like that. But at least he acknowledges it. Incredible. Now he's getting back into the elevator and going down again. Ladies and gentlemen, how does he keep coming up with all of this? Oh, I have many more great ideas in store for you. Like going back up. Genius. Did you think we were going to go forward down the spooky corridor? No. It's time once again to go back up in the elevator. I can't even begin to grapple with what might be up there. <laughs> Is it the boss's office again? Or what if it's the boss's office this time? The suspense is killing me. Or maybe it's just my Renora. Ah, good to be back. <laughs> oh my god. It's the boss's office. <sighs> this absolutely changes everything for me. <laughs> Give me a time out here for a minute while I process this. <laughs> oh, this is rich. Okay, I'm ready. I'm prepared to embrace this <laughs> stunning revelation and to move forward with... No! No, wait! No! I need more time to process. I have fully come to terms with it. I have made space in my worldview for this astonishing new reality. As before, I turn to your expert eye for gripping narrative, Master Stanley. <laughs> of course. Going back down in the elevator. How did I not anticipate it? I mean, sure, now it's obvious, but you have to understand that 30 seconds ago, <laughs> this kind of thing had never been attempted before. I had no frame of reference to even anticipate it. That's just how revelatory Stanley's decision making is a breath of fresh air in a landscape of storytelling that has grown stale and repetitive. <laughs> oh, the irony. Can we try one more time? I think we do. Okay, no more acknowledging. Hmm. You know what? Oh, okay. I've just thought of something. Okay. Hold on, okay. let's stop for a moment. Don't you realize? It's the anticipation, Stanley. You and I, we have no way of knowing what will be at the top of this elevator. Absolutely. But the suspense. The agony of waiting and anticipating and having to guess, that's the real thrill. 
Oh, I simply don't want to let that feeling go. It's so precious, so fleeting. Why don't we take this elevator ride nice and slow? <laughs> there we go. Isn't this so much more exciting? You know, Stanley, it seems like nowadays the only thing that audiences want is to be shocked as loudly and frequently as possible. They want big, explosive moments flung right in their faces from the very moment that things get started. But where's the tension? Where's the trust in the audience to build a slow and nuanced appreciation for the story, the characters? Why aren't we given time to imagine the surprises? To have to think and to anticipate and then to marvel at the eventual reveal. This is storytelling, Stanley. What you and I are doing right now. This is the most exciting narrative to be developed in years. And it's really all because of you. You're the one who took this bold step of revisiting the exact same locations over and over. Truly, I mean it. This is unique and different. It's not like anything else out there. You see, I want stories that surprise me, Stanley. I want to have to think. I want to be engaged and not pandered to. We're being fed such unimaginative drivel all the time and we all know it, which is why we're so starved for content that makes us feel sharp and vital and alive. That's why people like you so much, Stanley. Because you're not afraid to spit in the face of tradition. You're a role model, you know? People look up to you. Which is why, oh, I didn't know when to spring this on you, but, well, I've gathered a little press conference for you. Oh. So that you can talk about your work and your storytelling and your life. Yes, I know you're not much for the public eye, but I thought it would especially mean a lot to the people who have been following you from the beginning. They really look up to you, Stanley. I don't know if you realize the impact you have on them. This is the kind of gesture that might leave a tremendous impact on them for the better. Ooh. Oh good, we're here. Can I... Okay. Okay, the room where we're holding the press conference should be just around the corner here somewhere. <laughs> Stanley, life on stage, all eyes on Stanley. Oh. Ah, yes, here it is, just through this door. <laughs> Oh, that will be GLaDOS, I think. All right, are you ready? <clears throat> I've told them you're going to speak a little bit about the nature of surprise in storytelling and what it means to craft a truly unpredictable narrative. Oh, don't worry, you'll do great. Just be yourself and speak from the heart. I'm, I'm really proud of you, Stanley. Okay. It looks like they're ready for you. Go get them. <laughs> oh, so encouraging. Our big moment. Brace yourselves. Here we go. Whoa, that looks quite astonishing, actually. It's going to be nothing more than a lucid dream. Okay. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of oh, his whoa, co-workers. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hmm. But... Oh, 
At first, Stanley assumed he'd broken the map, until he heard this narration and realized it was part of the game's design all along. He then praised the game for its insightful and witty commentary into the nature of video game structure and its examination of structural narrative tropes. So, now that you're here, what do you think? Isn't this a fun and unique place to be? Why don't we take a minute just to drink it all in? Ah. Okay, I'm over it now. What do you think? Are you sick of this gag yet? Are we sick of this gag yet? We do? No. Ah, then in that case, we'll continue. But now, here comes the real question. What do you think would have happened if you had told me that you wanted this to stop? Do you think it would have been particularly different? Would I have taken the same idea but rephrased it superficially to fit that answer? Perhaps you never would even have thought of it if I hadn't brought up the issue in the first place. Oh, now think about it. Would it be worth it for you to restart and then come back here just to do the other option? Clearly this whole gag takes some time. What if the other option is even longer? How long will you spend in total just to have heard all the narration? Oh, and this is rich. Perhaps you've just played the other option, and now you've come to see what happens in this one. Not yet. So, what do you think? Which choice was the better one? Imagine if you had selected continue on your first playthrough, how tantalizing it would be not knowing what happens <laughs> when you pick the other option. Indeed, you are one of the lucky ones. Though if the other option is really miserable to listen to, then perhaps you're not. In fact, I'm just going to say that no one who's listening to this is lucky. Well now, I've built up the other option so much that I'm going to stop talking and leave you to your decision whether to come back here, continue with the game, or just sit in this spot forever and ever. Cheers. Cheers. Nothing of any interest happening. Or oh, I'm just too impatient. <laughs> just a wall. Okay, I'm gonna restart. How wonderful. Stanley was alone. <laughs> Finally. This is great, he thought to himself. This is what I've wanted all along. I got what I wanted. Yay. Got the house for myself. Oh, not yet. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Still so many things to do on the left side, I think. Yet there was not a single person here either. <coughs> Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Oh no, oh no, 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 not again. I won't be part of this. I'm not going to encourage you. I'm not going to say anything at all. I'm just going to be patient and wait for you to finish whatever it is you enjoy doing so much in this room. Please take your time. How kind of you. Uh, well, let's see. There's this broom. There's cables. There's... Okay. And to be honest with you guys, it's not really that interesting here. So, let's press on. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of again. any human life. What could it mean, he wondered. Desperate for answers, he began turning the room over looking for clues that might unravel the situation. Until at last, he discovered a keypad behind the boss's desk. Bum, bum, but alas, bum. no code. For this keypad guarded the terrible secret that lay buried below his feet. And so the boss had assigned it an I extra secret see. pin number, 2845. But of course, 
Stanley couldn't possibly have known. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. One more time. The lights rose on an enormous Whoa. room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Aha! You've made it to the bottom of the Mind Control Facility. Welcome! You see, back when the Stanley Parable first launched in 2013, getting to the bottom of the mind control facility was a bug that we simply didn't catch during development. And you all sent us lots of photos of it on Twitter and acted very superior about it. And you're all very, very clever, good for you. Anyway, <laughs> when it came time to update the game, we knew that we had to do something about this little goof of ours. So here you go, new content. You can call it the bottom of the mind control room ending, if that enhances your perception of the value of these updates. Isn't that what you crave? New content? Always more content, more content, more, 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 more. And we didn't even activate the new content section yet. I'm here to make it seem like we really covered every nook and cranny of the game with secrets and Easter eggs. How about this? We wrote a new piece of music just for this section. You won't hear it anywhere else in the game. It's a secret that's just for you. That's how special you are. We call this track, Good Job You've Made It to the Bottom of the Mind Control Facility. Well done. What an elaborate name. Good job. You did it. Good job. <laughs> Three, two, one. Good job. You made it to the bottom of the mind control facility. You jumped on the catwalk. You should have been careful. You should have been careful. It used to be a bug, but now it's an ending. Now it's an ending. And I believe in you. I believe in your ability to cross this barrier and chase your dreams. <laughs> the railings don't mean anything Good job, you did it 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 Woo! That's rocking Oh! You didn't have the courtesy to... Reset the game here. That's nice. <sighs> Going out there, all this pressure. I can't deal with this. But Stanley simply couldn't handle the pressure. What if he had to make a decision? What if a crucial outcome fell under his responsibility? He had never been trained for that. No. This couldn't go any way except badly. The thing to do now, Stanley thought to himself, is to wait. Nothing will hurt me. Nothing will break me. In here I can be happy forever. I will be happy. Stanley waited. Hours passed. Then days. Had years gone by? He no longer had the ability to tell. But the one thing he knew for sure beyond any doubt was that if he waited long enough, the answers would come. Eventually, sure someday, they would arrive. Soon, very soon now, this will end. He will be spoken to. He will be told what to do. Now it's just a little bit closer. Now it's even closer. Here it comes. <laughs> With every passing moment. Okay, back at the beginning. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Hmm. 
When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. I'm not entirely comfortable walking the left line to that. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Great idea. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. <laughs> Number one dead, just below it. it <laughs> oh my god. Yes, really, really worth it being here in the room. A room so utterly captivating that even though all your co-workers have mysteriously vanished, here you sit looking at these <coughs> chairs and some paintings. Really worth it. At this point, Stanley's obsession with this room bordered on creepy and reflected poorly on his overall personality. It's possible that this is why everyone left. Because of me? Stanley sat around waiting for more dialogue, but when a long time had passed and there was no more, he decided that the game was trying to send him a message. <laughs> and still they come. Beautiful. Beautifully boring. But at last, he'd had enough of the amazing room and took the first open door on his left to get back to business. Oh, so there's a chance to get back. And, and so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door and got back on track. <laughs> the anticipation. Later. Although... Can we go back, back? No, apparently not. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley no. decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Cheeky. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. We never walked downstairs. Oh, the anticipation. I can't wait. Huh? Hi, Loni. I wrote this in first period and left it in the locker on the way to the second. It's kinda hard to make out what's going on there. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss. Admitting he had left his post during work hours, he might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe oh, I father. am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical Excellent. sense. All right. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. 
he wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Whoa. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too, surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment, and my wife, and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Well, tough luck. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. <laughs> and in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Well, that's dark. Hold on. Uh, 
just wanted to leave you a message to let you know there's a few things I need you to pick up on your way home from work today. We need milk, cereal, dish soap, spaghetti, get a thing of sugar, some bread, and coffee beans, whichever ones you like. I'll give you a call if there's anything I forgot. Thanks, sweetie. See you tonight. Oh, how lovely. Get a loving wife. Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean, he wondered. Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. That kind of anxiety isn't healthy, so he relaxed for a few moments with some calming New Age music. Ah. Feeling soothed and rejuvenated, Stanley calmly walked forward into the opened passageway. This is actually pretty funny of a different reason that is not apparent at this moment. Because there's an achievement in which you have to end the game by following all of the narrations uh, within a certain amount of time limit. And uh, yeah, this is exactly to prevent this from ever happening. <laughs> Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. And this time we're trying to escape. Although this passageway had the word escape <coughs> written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. As the machine whirred into motion, and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, he reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plucking the eyeballs from a blind man. And so he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. Farewell, Stanley. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly.
and yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? So what is this sort of a museum of sorts? sounds <laughs> oh credits even stood on the roof narration outtakes oh nice there, shoot well try the other one then and finally he pushed the number nine Stanley stood on the roof Stanley pushed the orange lever. Stanley stood on the snow. Stanley pushed the big red button. The freedom ending. Isn't this considered a spoiler? The Zending model. for the Stanley Parable. Ah, I know this actually. I think I've seen pretty much every trailer available for this game. Okay. 
Perhaps we should get going. <laughs> How do you stay in shape? Questions to the narrator. Okay. Okay. War zone. Early in development, we designed an ending where Stanley would end up on a battlefield fighting aliens. Okay. The action game would become sentient and would wage war against the narrator. We realized shortly after starting to build it that it was far too jokey and on the nose for the tone of the game. Plus, some people interpreted this as making fun of people who like shooters, which was not our intention. I would have liked that. Uh, so, where is the ending? Ah, okay, here we go. <laughs> oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. But listen to me. You can still save those two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let time... Okay. Oh, another phone call. Good morning. Thank you for contacting the Future Happiness Foundation. We are confirming your shipment of 1,327 cardboard boxes to your place of work. Can you verify that this is correct? I actually cannot. Oh, I was supposed to... Oh, I think I was supposed to act. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Wow, yes, this room. What a room. What a beautiful room. What a gorgeous, gorgeous room. Thank goodness Stanley had taken this detour on his way to the meeting room. Life without having experienced this room <coughs> was now too horrible even to consider. I can smell your sarcasm, and I like it. Yes, really, really worth it being here in the... But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. Which he did. But Stanley well, didn't want to go back to the office. He wanted to wander about and get even further off track. So now in order to get back, he needed to go, um, uh, uh, from here, it's, um, left. Oh, no, 
No, it's to the right, my mistake. Mm, it happens to all of us. No, 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 not the right. Why would I have ever said it was to the right? What was I thinking? What were it's you clearly... thinking? Oh dear, would you hold on for a minute, please? Now, let's see. We went down right, left, down, left, right. Yep, yep, okay, okay, yes. I've got it now. This story is absolutely, definitely this way. Mm -hmm. I'm blinded by the light. No, 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 this isn't right at all. You're not supposed to be here yet. This is all a spoiler. Quick, Stanley, close your eyes. Okay, 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 okay. We just, we just have to get back to, um, oh. Who am I kidding? It's all rubbish now. The whole story completely unusable. How about rather than waste my time trying to salvage this nonsense, we'll just restart the game from the beginning. And this time, suppose we don't wander so far off track, hmm? Okay, from the top. We starting. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. new content it's gone when Stanley wait wait what no I'm... no I restarted I swear I definitely restarted the game over completely fresh everything should be oh did something change Stanley did you <laughs> change anything when we were back in that room with all the monitors did you move the story somewhere or a... hold on why am I asking you I'm the one who wrote the story was right here just a minute ago. I know for sure that it's here somewhere. Okay then, it's an adventure. Come, Ooh, Stanley. So many Let's find the story. I'll say it. This is the worst adventure I've ever been on. I can promise you there definitely was a story here before. Do we just... do we need to restart the game again? Well, I find it unlikely that we'll ever progress by starting over and over again, but it's got to be better than this. Okay, let's give it a shot. Why not? But I wasn't done exploring. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Um. Okay, yep, it's worse. I might be remembering this wrong. It's possible the story is back where we just came from. Why don't we go back the other direction and see if we missed anything? Here we go. Here, I missed something. Aha! I knew we'd miss something. The story. Here it comes. This is a slightly illogical rule. No, wait. Uh, Never uh, mind. Not the story. Okay, let's head back the other way and retrace our steps. Now this, well, I'll be honest, I don't recognize this place at all. Is this the story? I don't think so. I can't quite recall, but I believe my story took place in an office building. It, is that correct? Hmm. Do you remember, Stanley? Or well, do you know what? Since I've completely forgotten what we were supposed to be doing, how about this? You win! Woo! Congratulations! I know you put in a lot of hard work, and it really paid off, so... Good job. 
Oh, no. No, I don't feel <coughs> right about this at all. We both know you didn't put in any actual work for that win. Some people win fair and square, and this was not one of those situations. Okay, I'm getting weirded out by whatever this place is. I don't care what might happen this time, I have to restart. This looks different. All right, I've got a solution. This time, to make sure we don't get lost, I've employed the help of the Stanley Parable Adventure Line. Just follow the line. How simple is that? Trademark. What happens if I follow... Ah, okay, I can't. No, no, I'm down. We're leaving it up to the line from now on. All right. You see, the line knows where the story is. It's over in this direction. Onward, Stanley, to destiny. Though, here's a thought. Wouldn't wherever we end up be our destination, even if there's no story there? Or to put it another way, is the story of no destination still a story? Simply by the act of moving forward, are we implying a journey such that a destination is inevitably conjured into being via the very manifestation of the nature of life itself? Okay, Stanley, I need to follow this train of thought for a minute. Just stick with me. Now, we can both agree that the nature of existence is, in fact, a byproduct of one subjective experience of that existence, right? Okay, now, if my experience of your existence rests inside of your subjective experience of this office, is this office, in fact, the skeleton of my own relative experiential mental subjective construct? Whoa, 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 hang on. That got a bit weird back there. Well, I'd like to apologize. Not sure where I was going with all that. <laughs> you know what? I think what we need right now is a bit of music to lighten the mood. To adventure!
Cut the music. Go back and look at that fern. Stanley, this fern will be very important later in the story. Make sure you study it closely and remember it carefully. <coughs> you won't want to miss anything. Okay, let's see. Um, what can go wrong? Wait, what? We're back at the office? No, no, no. Line, you do know we're looking for the Stanley Parable, right? The story? Is any of this ringing a bell? Oh, no, 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 not again. Line, how could you have done this to us? And after we trusted you, after everything we've been through, you... Well, I can't take this anymore. To hell with it. Restart. For good this time? Uh, nope. You know what, Stanley? I say forget the adventure line. What's it ever done for us? We're intelligent people, right? Why can't we make up our own story? Something exciting, daring, mysterious. Ooh, this all sounds perfectly doable. Why don't we simply start wandering in, well, I don't know. How about this direction? Ooh, exciting. Now. Yes, this is exciting. Just me and Stanley forging a new path, a new story. Well, it could be anything. What do you want our story to be? <laughs> that layout. Go wild. Use your imagination. Whatever it might be, Stanley, I'm ready for it. Oh, uh, no, not you again. Line. Hello. Stanley, I'd also like to veto the line from having any role in our awesome new story. No lines or monitor rooms. Just don't acknowledge it. We should be fine. <laughs> He's beginning to sound desperate. Ah, a choice. We get to make a decision. From here, the story is in our control. How important we mustn't squander the opportunity. In fact, I believe I need a minute to think here. Just walk in circles for a minute. Okay, mm, the opposite direction. so I know that each door has to lead somewhere, oh, which means that somewhere, the place where we're trying to go, there must be a reverse door that leads here. And that, in turn, means that our destination corresponds with the counter-inverted reverse door's origin. So starting from the right, let us ask, will taking the right door lead us to where we're going? And since the answer is clearly yes, then by all accounts, the door on the right is the correct one. Another victory for logic. <laughs> Come, Stanley. Our destiny awaits. Oh, hold up. What's this? Hmm. Hmm. The confusion ending. You're telling me that's what this is? It's all one giant ending? And we're supposed to restart the game what, eight? Eight times? That's really how all this goes? It's all determined? So now, according to the schedule, I restart again. Then what? Am I just supposed to forget? Well, what if I don't want to forget? My mind goes blank simply because it's written here on this, this thing, wall. Well, who consulted me? Why don't I get to decide? Why don't I get a say in all of this? Is it really? No, it can't be. I, I don't want it to be. I, I don't want the game to keep restarting. I, I don't want to forget what's going on. I don't want to be trapped like this. I won't restart the game. I won't do it. I won't do it. I won't do like it. A child. And the timer to stopped. Does that mean? Um, did we do it? Did we break the cycle? The um, whatever it is that made this schedule. How would we even know? Will someone come for us? Will something happen? So, okay. <sighs> I guess now we just wait. You know, I suppose in some way that this is a kind of story. Wouldn't you agree? I'm not quite sure if we're in the destination or the journey. Though they're always saying that life is about the journey and not the destination. So I hope that's where we are right now. We'll find out, won't we? Eventually. Well, in the meantime, if you... <laughs> oh, phone call. Hi, Stanley. I uh, just wanted to leave you a message.
just let you know there's a few things I need you to pick up on your way home from work today. We need milk, cereal, dish soap, spaghetti, get a thing of sugar, some bread, and coffee beans, whichever ones you like. I'll give you a call if there's anything I forgot. Thanks, sweetie. See you tonight. Oh, and I, I guess this is where Stanley felt he needed to be right now. Ah, no, apparently not. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. The lounge was sublime, a work of art. What was it about this room that called so deeply and so personally to Stanley? Its grace? Its subtle charm? No. Stanley knew it was something deeper. Something darker. And I have no intention to find but out. eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. <coughs> we won't. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Okay. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Ooh. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me. I'm asking for her. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this, to reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. Since she was the one calling before, I think it's only logical that we're gonna do this. Sweetie, sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pulling the bread out of the oven. Oh, nice voice. Right. Okay, there we go. All right, now I want you to come in and tell me all about your day. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife who'd want to commit their life to you? I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. Nope, I'm out of here. Sorry, but you're in my story now. Mm. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. Doc. Good morning, employee 47. Press P on your keyboard. Oh, I think I know where this is going to lead me. Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. Please press B. Look at him there, pushing buttons, doing exactly what he's told to do. Now he's pushing a button. Now he's eating lunch. Now he's going home. <coughs> now he's coming back to work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. But in his mind, ah, in his mind he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown. Fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. Where's the television? Ah, here. And so he began to fantasize about his own job. First, he imagined that one day while at work, 
He stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought excited him terribly. So he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. As he wandered through this <laughs> fantasy world, he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. Down one path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he called it the Stanley Parable. It was such a wonderful fantasy. And so in his head, he relived it again and then again, and again, over and over, wishing beyond hope that it would never end, that he might always feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. Oh. But there is no answer. How could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets, the more he forgets which life is the real one. And I'm trying to tell him this, that in this world he can never be anything but an observer, that as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. I'll wait it out. But I think that's the irony here, right? Here we go. You see, can he just not hear me? How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? <laughs> Question nothing. I suppose I can't, not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time you'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again, and Stanley pushed a button. And I tried again, and Stanley pushed a button. And I tried... <coughs> How long was I sitting there? Stanley wondered to himself. Minutes? Days? Centuries? Did something crucial happen while my senses were turned? He made a note to be more careful with time from now on. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Standing now in this incredible room, Stanley for the first time understood true happiness. I'm so happy. Then the feeling went away, and he felt sad again. I'm so sad. Then it came back, and lingered for a minute or I'm two. I'm so happy. Now it's only half there. Just a kind of, um, well, I think kind of meh. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. And he didn't. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago.
Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been... What? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why, I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. Nah. Aha, perhaps you misunderstood. Stanley walked through the red door. Hmm, guess there's nothing I can do against this. Oh, thank God you are willing to listen to me. Do you see that I really have wanted you to be happy all this time? The problem is all these choices. The two of us always trying to get somewhere that isn't here. Running and running and running, just the way you're doing right now. Don't you see that it's killing us, Stanley? I just... I wanted to stop. I would... We would both be so much happier if we just... Stopped. And I think... Well, I think I have a solution. Here, let me show you. Do we want? What are we looking for? Hmm? Here. Yes. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? If we just stay right here, right in this moment with this place, Stanley, I think I feel happy. Oh. I actually feel happy. <laughs> This is beautiful and trippy. Just enjoy it for a few seconds. Whoa, this gets really trippy. Let's push up. No, wait. Where are you going? Oh no! Stay away from those stairs! If you hurt yourself, if you die, the game will reset! We'll lose all of this! Hmm. Good, good. We can't be too safe. Promise me you won't go back there, hmm? Just, just stay here. But staying here accomplishes... Well... Nothing? Actually, playing this game accomplishes pretty much uh, nothing, but you get my point. No! What do we talk about? You're risking everything we achieved here! Oh, ominous feeling. You heard me before, didn't you? You will die! What about this isn't getting through to you? Please, no, Stanley, let me stay here. Don't take this from me. Please, Stanley, think about what you're doing. No! Oof. Oh. Ouch. Thank God you lived. You had me worried there for a moment. Now, can we please get back to the other room? Ooh, we are actually getting slower. There. See? This is what you want. This is where we can both be happy. We really can. If we stop moving, we just have to stop moving.
Stanley, <laughs> oh, go back. There's nothing good that can come from this. No. No, no, what are you doing, Stan? Do you just not believe me? What can I say to convince you? Ugh. Stanley, let's go back to the other room. Can you do that for me? Yes, perhaps you can. Perhaps you finally see what I'm talking about. I know you'll see. You'll see that we can't be happy if we leave this place. You can see that, can't you? I know that it is not a safe or a healthy thing to do. No, perhaps not. Ah, just to torment him for a little bit. Okay. My God, is this really how much you dislike my game? That you'll throw yourself from this platform over and over to be rid of it? You were literally willing to kill yourself <laughs> to keep me from being happy. Am I reading the situation correctly? Oh, this is so hard to do. Johnny Mo! Oh. Well, maybe you're just getting a kick out of it. <laughs> I don't know anymore. I just wanted us to get along. But I guess that was, do you actually want to stay alive? Or are you just teasing me? Oh, he's losing hope. This is so sad. I wanted us to be happy here, Stanley. I really did. I wish I still thought that was possible. <laughs> Don't make this so hard. This is putting some stress on me. <laughs> wow. Oh, what's this? Oh, cute. <laughs> this cold grayish room. Really, it's wow. The stark contrast. Is it over? It's going to restart, isn't it? I'm going back. Oh, it was so sad. Stanley decided to go to the meeting room to check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself and constantly needed support and guidance from others. So the thought of total solitude was terrifying to him. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Stanley felt lightheaded, butterflies in his stomach, giddy in a way he had never known before. Aww. Was it this room? A connection between the two? Could a man love a room? I mean, truly, truly deeply, madly, love. The answer is but yes. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Hold on, can I?
Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. What? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why, I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. Aha, perhaps you misunderstood. Stanley walked through the red door. I still don't think we're communicating <laughs> properly. Stanley walked through the red door. I like door. they even adapted the subtitles to this. Oh, would you look at that? A blue door. All right, fine. Go ahead, Stanley. You want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find out what lies at the end of this road you've chosen? Well, don't let me stop you. You see? There's nothing here. I haven't even finished building this section of the map because you were never supposed to be here in the first place. Broken rooms, exposed developer textures. Is this what you had wanted? Was it worth ruining the entire story I had written out specifically for you? Do you not think I put a lot of time into that? Because I did. And in the end, it was all for nothing. Because this is what you wanted to see. Help me here, Stanley. Help elucidate these strange and unknowable desires of yours. What would have made this game better? What did you want to see? Vehicles? Skill trees? Work with me. You've given me absolutely nothing so far. Tell you what. Let me take a stab in the dark at a new design and you can give me some feedback. There we go. A third option. Ooh. This already feels leaps ahead of where we were before. Go ahead, Stanley. Take it for a spin. Okay, I'm going to stop you there. Now, tell me about your experience with this new version. Would you say that the game benefited from allowing you more choices? Feel free to be honest. I'm looking for some real critical feedback here. Aha! You see, I knew I was onto something. Where do these flashes of inspiration come from? <laughs> How did I know the game needed a third door? Well, it's instinct mostly, a calling in your gut. I really couldn't say where the idea came from, except that I, I felt it in my soul. You can't teach that, Stanley. Don't even try. Here, based on the data from your previous playthrough, I've compiled a new version. And to be perfectly candid, I think I've knocked it out of the park with this one. Let's take a look. Ooh. <laughs> Ninety eight point nine. <laughs> oh. Now, would you say that competitive leaderboard helped you feel motivated to keep walking through doors? Again, honest answers, please. Meh. Hey, I nearly forgot. I've got a prototype of a new game I've been working on, and now would be a lovely opportunity to give it some playtesting. You wouldn't mind taking a look at it, would you? Perfect. Let me boot it up. In this game, the baby crawls left towards danger. <laughs> you click the button to move him back to the right, and if he reaches the fire, you fail. It's a very meaningful game, all about the desperation and tedium of endlessly confronting the demands of family life. I think the art world will really take notice. But of course, the message of the game only becomes clear once you've been playing it for about four hours. So why don't you give it four hours of play to make sure it's effective? Be sure to keep notes on your experience. <laughs> you 
heartless bastard. <laughs> Did you do it because you hate babies or purely to spite me? Because if it's the latter, well, I don't know what to do. I'm completely out of ideas. I can't think of a single thing that might improve the experience for me. I'm not even going to try. I'm out, <coughs> I'm out, I'm done. It's over. Thank you for playing. Your input was extremely valuable. <laughs> oh, hey, since my game was so awful, why don't we play someone else's game? Just to ease the pain. Let's see. What do we have here? <coughs> yes. This seems like it'll work. Let's give it a shot. Aha! Fascinating. What do you think this game is about, Stanley? What's our backstory? What is our motivation? Hmm. Well, it seems obvious to me that you are meant to play as a creepy man spying on innocent civilians below you from up high in your creep tower, perhaps for some sort of twisted erotic purpose. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, that must be it. What a fascinating venture into the experience of total mental depravity. So far, I love everything about this game, Stanley. And it seems there's even more. Come, let's venture outward and see what else is out there. Here we go. Ooh, so mend it. Oh no. No, 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 it can't be. It is. It's an open world game. Good God, quickly block it off. Uh, oh, no, no, no. Oh. Oh. Thank goodness, Stanley, what a close call. You nearly wandered off into that, that thing, that big open, just wandering around, no right or wrong directions, no path to follow. You can just go in any... Ooh. Oh, thank heavens it's we avoided it. We're out of the woods now, Stanley. Okay, I'm going to get us out of here. Let's find another game. Preferably something with walls. Something with nice, big, insurmountable walls. <laughs> okay, I think this will be just the thing. This looks Wonderful. familiar. See, this is exactly what I had in mind. Just a nice big box for you to run around in. There isn't any possibility that you could get lost here. Now this is game design. Stanley, if you manage to get lost in this game, I will be phenomenally impressed. Let's impress him. Okay, so what exactly do we do here? Let's see. There are lots of cars here in the back, but obviously there's no racetrack. Okay, I'm seeing that there's a ball of some kind back here. Is this game sports ball? Stanley, I think it's sports ball. Oh, what <laughs> fun. We shall run the bases and do a touchdown together? Yes, I think surely we must. Okay, Stanley, here's the ball. Have fun. Ooh, I can run. Are you doing it? Are you winning? Is this fun? Is it better than my miserable little story that I work so hard on? Stanley, I have a thought, and I realize I'm not a sportsologist, but if one ball generates a certain amount of raw adrenal pleasure, then surely multiple balls makes for an even more euphoric sports experience. I'm going to try it out. Here comes another ball. Yes! Oh goodness, that really does feel amazing, doesn't it? Stanley, I'm like a child in a confectionery shop. I simply have to have more. I'm insatiable. More balls! Whoa! Nice! Are you enjoying this, Stanley? Are you having fun? Is this a real video game? Well, I sure hope you're having a good time, because guess what? It's over. That's right. Your little fun comes to an end. This is my game, and what I say goes. You get to have fun when I let you, Stanley. Besides, you need someone like me to set boundaries for you. 
Without rules or boundaries, video games are nothing. Yes, that's what I am. I'm structure. I'm your sense of purpose. And since you decided you didn't want to play my game, now I don't want to play with you either. So goodbye, Stanley. I'm leaving. See how you'd like it when I'm not around to set the rules. Somehow, I don't think you'll enjoy it as much. But who knows? You're an inventive kid. You'll come up with something. After all, you're the one who knows best. Take care, Stanley. Hold on, what are you doing? Stanley, don't do that. I can't follow you there. I can't help you. How will you write a story without me? You can't do it. You know that. Stanley, come back. This is going back to the original mod. Nice. I wonder what he found. If what he wanted was to be the leading man in his own story, well, perhaps he's gotten it. Down in wherever he is right now. I wonder if he's happy with his choice, and if he's learned the heavy cost that comes with it. He'll understand soon what I was trying to tell him. He needs me. Someone who will wrap everything up at the end to make sense out of the chaos and the fear and the confusion. That's who I am. That is what I mean to this world. Oh, yes. Yes, I'll be back. There's no other way. Once this ends, after it all comes to a close, then I'll be back. The end will be here soon. Very soon. I can wait. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. The lounge was grand, majestic, <laughs> perhaps too majestic. Like a combination of a much smaller version and a much larger version of this exact room. It all made Stanley uncomfortable, and he started to bleed a little. This made him smile. At last, what? proof that he was human. Oof, dark. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. But in his eagerness to prove that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley leapt from the platform and plunged to his death. Good job, Stanley. Everyone thinks you are very powerful. <laughs> Stanley had never seen the office this brightly lit. Was it a sign of something? He hoped it was. He hoped very much that it was. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. And here it so. was, the lounge. What a room, Stanley thought to himself. What a room, what a room, what a room. This is what, what, what Stanley thought. What, what a, a room. room. What a room, what a room. What a room. Va va voom. <laughs> what a room. But eager to get back to business, <clears throat> Stanley took the first open door on his left. 
Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. How did we get there? Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision. But in his eagerness to prove that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley leapt from the platform and plunged to his death. Uh, Good job, Stanley. Everyone thinks you are very powerful. All right, for this session, there's one just more a step ending. through this door. Stanley thought to himself, "That's all I need. If I can make it through this door, I can make it through them all." When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. It was okay. <laughs> but eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for... This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. As Stanley picked up the phone, a white light engulfed him, filling him not just with radiance, but with hope. Hope for a life reunited one... Wait. Oh, goodness. Stanley, did you just unplug the phone? No, that wasn't supposed to be a choice. How did you do that? You actually chose incorrectly. I didn't even know that was possible. Let me double check. No, it's definitely here, clear as day. Stanley picks up the phone. He's taken to his apartment where he finds his wife and the two pledge themselves to one another. Music Aww. comes in, fade to white, roll credits. Not picking up the phone is actually somehow an incorrect course of action. How is that even possible? None of these decisions were supposed to mean anything. I don't understand. How on earth are you making meaningful choices? What did you... Wait a second. Did I just see... No, that's not possible. I can't believe it. How had I not noticed it sooner? You're not Stanley. You're a real person. <sighs> I can't believe I was so mistaken. This is why you've been able to make correct and incorrect choices, and to think I've been letting you run around in this game for so long. If you've made any more wrong choices, you might have negated it entirely. It's as though you completely ignored even the most basic safety protocol for real-world decision-making. Or did you not grasp the severity of the situation? Well, I won't have that kind of risk on my watch. I'm going to stop the game for a moment so we can educate you properly on safe decision-making in the real world. Oh, this Please is great. observe this helpful instructional video. Choice. It's the best part of being a real person. But if used incorrectly, can also be the most dangerous. For example, in this scenario, a hypothetical real person named Rupert has a choice. He could invent a machine that eliminates food shortages across the world to make life better for all people or he could spend years of hard work forgetting how to read. Which choice would you make? 
Remember that unlike here, the real world makes sense, and at no time should you make a choice that does not conform to rational logic. If you find yourself speaking with a person who does not make sense, in all likelihood, that person is not real. Allow the person to finish their thought, then provide an excuse why you cannot continue talking. Turn to a partner and practice saying, my goodness, is it 4.30? I'm supposed to be having a back sack and crack. Excellent. Making choices on a regular basis is the best part to a healthy decision-making process. Most medical professionals recommend making at least eight choices per day. Do you make more than eight? Less? And finally, if you begin to wonder if your choices are actually meaningful and whether you'll ever make a significant contribution to the world, just remember that in the vast infiniteness of space, your thoughts and problems are materially insignificant and the feeling should subside. At this time, your instructor will guide you in an exercise to test and reinforce the material covered in this video. Ah, welcome back. You may mm, have noticed rubbish. that this room has begun to deteriorate as a result of narrative contradiction. But not to worry. Now that you're properly informed on good decision making, we're going to revisit a choice you made just a few minutes ago and see what the correct thing to do would have been. This way, please. Now that we know your choices are meaningful, we can't have you jumping off the platform and dying. Imagine the main character dying senselessly halfway through the story. That story would make no sense at all. We just need to get you home as soon as possible before the narrative contradiction gets any worse. Unfortunately, it seems this place is not well equipped to deal with reality. there, you'll take the door on the left, back to the correct ending, the story will have resolution once again, and you'll be home free in the real world. Now remember, all you need to do is behave exactly as Stanley would. <laughs> that means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Nope. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back in the other direction. Perhaps we're not too late. Uh... Oh, it's ruined. You, I can't believe, after everything we talked about, that you... My story! You've destroyed my work! Why? For what? What did you get out of that? What did you think was so special about seeing the game undone? Left here like so much garbage, it, well, it's worthless now. And what am I supposed to do? Even if there were a way to continue, would it be worth it? To know that my story is now incorrect? How can I go back to that? I can't erase that knowledge. I'll have to live with it forever. Reliving its impossibility forever. Oh, I couldn't live that way. Is it better to shut the game down entirely? To willingly destroy all of my work? I don't know. What's the answer? What do I do? What do I do? What do I... No, I have to. I have to shut the game down. I have to. I have to. thought you were so clever. Now look where we are. My entire game is destroyed. It was the only thing in the world that was mine and you've run it into the ground. What, did you think that would be funny? You just had to see? 
didn't I impress upon you how important it was to be like Stanley? He actually knows how to do what I tell him to. He understands that if I say to do something, there's a damn good reason for it. That thought hadn't even occurred to you, had it? That there's a world outside of you? You're a child. Oh, my story. Actually, if feel... you'd just gone through the door Guilty. on the left, you would have seen it. There was a whole underground facility. You would have destroyed it and been victorious. It would have been so perfect. I worked so hard on it. I tried so hard to make... ...is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Oh, I can't help. Coming to a staircase, <laughs> Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Making sure I cannot go downstairs. Uh... Stepping inside his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover <laughs> not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this until he saw the door with a voice receiver next to it. Surely behind this door lay all the answers to his questions. And beyond all probability, he knew the passcode. He had seen it on his boss's computer just last week. Night Shark 115. Was this the code to open the door? Would it still work? There was only one way to find out. Stanley had been trained never to speak up. But now, he would draw from within himself the courage to face the unknown. He drew a sharp breath and then spoke the code. Stanley doesn't speak. He's pushing buttons. <clears throat> Stanley spoke the code. Night Shark 115. I mean, he since... spoke it into the receiver. Right there on the wall. I mean, since we already established that I'm not Stanley. I'm yeah. sorry, is there a problem? You didn't mishear me, did you? Please speak the code into the receiver. Otherwise, we can't get on with the story. This is a crucial step. Okay, fine. You're not going to do it. But you know what? It's pretty humiliating to bring you this far, only for you to suddenly decide you have better things to do. I asked you for this one single thing, for your respect. The kind of respect Stanley shows for his choices. He knows what it means to take a story seriously. If you didn't want to see what I had to show you, then why did you come here? You had a choice, you know. You could have gone through the door on the right. You could have done whatever the hell you wanted over there. Why did you come this way? Speak. Say something to me. Explain yourself, you coward. You... When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Stanley? Hello? Are you... Is everything okay? Stanley, please. I... I need you to make a choice. I need you to walk through the door. Are you listening to me? Can you hear me? Is everything all right? Stanley, this is important. The story needs you. It needs you to make a decision. It cannot exist without you. Do you understand me? Whatever choice you make is just fine. They're both correct. You cannot be wrong here. We can work together. I'll accept whatever you do. I simply need you to take that step forward, please. Choose. Do something. Anything. This is more important than you can ever know. I need this. The story needs it. So, you hear me? Are you there? Are you listening to this? Danny, are you there? Okay. It's okay, I can wait. You need time to decide. 
Time to make sure your choice is correct. That is the best choice. That's all right. I'll wait for you to decide what's the right thing to do. Take as much time as you need. So there's one more thing I'm attempting to do before calling it a day. A soft wind blew outside and perhaps rain started. And if it did, it stopped shortly after. Stanley hoped that he would one day see weather. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Exactly. right all of his co-workers were gone what could it mean Stanley decided so to go to the meeting room. perhaps he had simply missed a to memo be on time for the achievement when Stanley came to a set of two open doors he entered the door on his left Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Okay, I think we all know the drill by now. Blah, 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 dark secrets, the keypad, Stanley pushes some buttons. Oh, hey, look, it's a new passageway. Kill surprise. <laughs> Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold, Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world but here was the proof the heart of the operation controls labeled with emotions happy 
or sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machine... Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes! He had won! He had defeated the machine! Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, so this right is basically now, how you the achieve things this were meant trophy. to happen. You have to replay it and a couple Stanley of times. was happy. Passing it until there's no more um, unnecessary break in between. And so yeah, now we came full circle. That is, there's one little thing How left. long was I sitting there? Stanley wondered to himself. Minutes? Aha. Days? Centuries? This one. Let's go to heaven. Paradise for Stanley. It's buttons. Buttons. Oh. It's beautiful. Let's see how many we can actually push in one go. Chanting in the background, buttons, buttons. Okay, that about covers it. Um, next time we're gonna hit the, the new contents. And um, for now, I bid you farewell. And until next time, my friends.